Dab it peace. Dab it peace. It's another opportunity for us to come together and hear and learn of the word of truth as given to us by the Most High God. All honor goes to the Father through the Son, whose name is Yahushua. In him lies the only hope for salvation. We know that it is obtained by grace through faith, not of works, lest anyone should boast and give him freely as a gift to all who obey him. We understand that if you do not obey him, it is made manifest or made obvious that you do not believe. In this state, you should expect no good thing from the Most High. However, anything that you do give, whether it be a gift of tongues, a gift of prophecy, or any supernatural experience that you may have, it can and it will be used against you in the day of judgment. With that said, peace to the saints that are in the room, to the saints that couldn't make it, to the saints watching in on the camera, and the saints that we don't even know about around the world. But no peace to the wicked. The only thing we say to them is repent that they might live. Last week, we talked a little bit about uh, Jeremiah, the prophet Jeremiah and his prophecy, not only to Josiah, but how he started to prophesy during the time of uh, Jehoash and then also to Jehoash's brother, Jehoiakim, right? Whose original name was Eliakim, but the Egyptian, pre uh, I was going to say the Egyptian president, the Egyptian uh, king changed his name to uh, Jehoiakim. So then Jehoiakim, after he took reign, we read a couple weeks ago about how Nebuchadnezzar came and gaffled him up but we wanted to kind of like when we just read it in kings it can give you the impression some people might leave with the impression that you know what i'm saying jehoiakim ain't really got a chance he just came in and sure he didn't do he didn't do good but you know what i'm saying the most high god didn't give him a chance to repent that's not true right so we went through some of the prophecy that jehoiakim would have heard from jeremiah last week and in that prophecy Jehoiakim's men, right? The people that were rulers along with Jehoiakim, namely one of his governors, right? End up punching Jeremiah in the face just for his prophecy and putting him in jail. To the point where Jeremiah, we talked about how Jeremiah was going through emotional issues. He was depressed about it. He is praying. He said, he said, curse the day that I was born. Curse the man who brought my father good tidings. You know what I'm saying? Curse the man who told my daddy, your boy is here. What you want to name him? <laughs> Jeremiah. Right. He told him, you know what I'm saying? Curse that man and curse the day I was born. Right. And, the and you know, that's like that's like basically just saying, I wish I was never here. Right. I wish I was never here. So he dealing with a little bit of depression and it stems from, you know, what I'm saying the the rulership of Jehoiakim that's allowing or having him beat up. Right. But that's not the end of it. We're going to see a whole lot more than that. Right. Real quick, let's go to um, 2 Kings chapter 26. Is it 26? Let me set up. 2 Kings chapter 23, not 26. 2 Kings chapter 23, verse, verse uh, jump on down to like verse 24. The second Kings chapter 23, verse 24. Moreover, the workers with familiar spirits and the wizards and the images and the idols and all the abominations abide in the land of Judah and in Jerusalem, did Josiah put away that he might perform the words of the law, which were written in the book of that Hilkiah, the priest found in the house of the Lord. Mm -hmm. And like unto him that were no king before him, that turned to the Lord with all his heart and with all his soul and with all his might, according to all the law of Moses, neither after him arose any, any like any like in, arose there, any like him. Not with right. That's Josiah. Josiah is our last good king. We're going we're going to do some talking when we get real quick. Turn to Revelation. Grab Revelation chapter. Uh, zzz, what I want. Revelation chapter. It's brother T fault, you know what I'm saying? Before we got started, he was talking about revelation. So my mind, you know what I'm saying, just start making. Look, go to Revelation chapter, is it five? Start Revelation chapter five. Give me verse one. It's Revelation chapter five, verse one. Bro, Justin, what's going on, man?
And I saw in the right hand of him that sat on the throne a book written within and on the backside sealed with seven seals. And I saw a strong angel proclaiming with a loud voice, who is worthy to open the book and to loose it? And no man in heaven nor earth, neither under the earth, was able to open the book. Neither look Everybody's up. mouth was shut. You know what I'm talking about? He called out. He said, who's worthy to open a book? Everybody quiet. Can't nobody do it. Sit y'all butts down. Watch this, though. Keep going. And I wept much because no man was worthy to open and read the book. Neither to look Nobody down. was worthy to open and read the book. Keep going. And one of the elders saith unto me, Weep not, behold not, behold, the lion of tri the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, has prevailed to open the book to seven seals thereof. Mm -hmm. And I beheld and lo, in the midst of the throne, and of the four beasts, and in the midst of the elders stood a lamb that as it had been slain. Having right? Seven horns, a lamb, a lamb that looked like it had been slain. Right. So you see a, a lamb that looked like he had been slain. And then what else? What else about that lamb? I mean, seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven. Yeah. How many people. horns? Seven horns and seven eyes. So anybody who wor watched the, the Revelation series that we did or is familiar with Revelations, they can tell you what a horn represents. Right. Anytime we see that horn. It represents a king. And seven eyes, the seven eyes represent spirits, right? But the, the horns represent a king. So this suggests that there are seven kings, right? Seven kings that Yahushua has as part of his vision. The vision that John was given about Yahushua is seven kings that's represented by Yahushua. We're going to go deeper into this when we get back into Revelation. But there's only seven good kings of Judah, seven good kings of Israel and Judah, period. Ain't no good kings on, on, on Israel's side, right? But there are seven kings that did right by Yah, that the Most High God said he was pleased with what they did, or, or Chronicles and Revelation said that they did good in the, in the sight of the Most High God. It's only seven of them, right? So when we dig into this, we're going to go back and look at all the seven. We've already read about all of, all of the seven so far. Josiah is the last of those seven. Right? Let's go back. It's important to know that because you're going to see throughout the prophecy that we start to read, it references back to Josiah. And, and remember, the kings that we're dealing with, the kings also are... Uh, all right, so far, they're all sons of Josiah. So usually you have a king and then the king have a son and then another king have a son and another king have a son and they go down the line. But in this case, it worked out differently. Josiah had a son. The king of Egypt came, took him captive and made his brother a son. So both of these kings were sons of the same man. Right. Let's go. Let's keep going. And Revelation? No, not Revelation. Let's go back to uh to Kings. We're gonna get deeper. I don't wanna I, I want to, but we you know what I'm saying we're gonna get deeper into Revelation. Let's uh, let's go to Kings. Because the problem with Revelation, you gotta understand, you know what I'm saying? Like you have to understand so much of the scripture. I won't sit here and lie and say I understand all the revelations, not with confidence, but let me tell you something. It's certain whole chapters with confidence. I feel like I know exactly what y'all trying to say. I can't say I know exactly how it's gonna play out. But I understand the message with you that yeah, I, I feel like I understand exactly what he's saying. Only because I know the scriptures. So it's like the more familiar you are with the prophecy and with the history, then it gives you what you need to line some of this stuff up, especially when it's re related to our history. Now you got to be an expert in world history and all that stuff. stuff. So you got to be an expert in world history and our history to get the whole shebang. You know what I'm saying? I ain't no expert in world history. You know what I'm saying? Even people lost me in some of this stuff. You know what I'm saying? But if you get you get our history, you get prophecy, you know what I'm saying? You got more than half of it, you're doing that. You just got to get with one of these white folks that know history and you can correct them about how, how we play into it. Because they all think, you know what I'm saying? They all think we come from Africa. You know what I'm saying? They think we come from South Africa. They think we darn wrap rings around our neck and stretch our darn necks out and wear big old cubes on their ears. Let them darn tell it.
people is lost. We all lost. They just as silly as we are. You know what I'm saying? You talk to the average of us, we say, no, nah, I'm a Gentile. I'm proud to be a Gentile. Yeah, we silly too. Most high guys say here, he you know what I'm saying? He's going to bring us to jealousy with a foolish nation. You know what I'm saying? These people, a lot of people be feeling, you know what I'm saying, putting in their mind that these people is, uh, they masterminds. I just watched a movie called uh, Leave the World Behind. And one thing I liked about it is uh, the dude that's supposed to be playing Blade, you know what I'm saying, what's his name? Mar you know what I'm saying, Marsha Arla, whatever his name is. You know what I'm saying? He, uh, one thing he said in there, he was like, a lot of people be thinking that the world is controlled by these super groups. He is like, the scarier thought is that no one's in control. You know what I'm saying? That's, that's how I view the world. I don't, I don't view the people. Listen, I can't say I met some of the people that's top, but I met, I didn't met some like people that's supposed to be top of the line and they're not that sharp. You know what I'm saying? Like, I be talking I'm like these dudes is not that sharp. So I don't, that's dead for me. I don't believe it's like no mastermind controlling everything. Nah, the most high God control all this stuff. You got spirits and that's, that's manipulating people and, and having them do things that they don't even think it's in their mind to do. And the most high God given to their hand. And that's what happened with uh, Nebuchadnezzar. Keep going. Watch this. Second Kings uh, 23 verse what? Verse 25. 25. This is second Kings chapter 23 verse 25. We got a lot to cover. Let's try to move through it. And like unto him, was there no king before him that turned to the Lord with all his heart and with all his soul and with all his might, according to all of the law of Moses, according to all the law of Moses, neither after him arose any, any like him. Notwithstanding the Lord, the fierceness of his great wrath, wherewith his anger was kindled against Judah because of all the provocations that Messiah Manasseh had provoked him with all. And the Lord said, I will remove Judah also out of my sight as if I have, as I have removed Israel and will cast off the city Jerusalem. With so now this is, this is the, head. this is what the most high God said. He said he going to get rid of Judah just like he got rid of uh, Israel. Keep going. Which I've chosen in the house, which I said, my name shall be there. Now the rest mm -hmm. of the act of Josiah and all that he did. So hold on. Where was, where was his name before, before he placed his name in Judah? Where was his name before that? Shiloh. Who remembers? It was in Shiloh. Shiloh, right? Shiloh was in uh, uh, Ephraim. Right? So now Ephraim is gone. You know what I'm saying? Like all of our brothers up north, gone. Except for the ones that came down with us. Right? They're out of there. The king of Assyria came, grabbed them, gaffled them up, and replaced them with Gentiles. And so we saw that with our own eyes, right? Then he said, I placed my name. Well, before that, he placed his name in Judah, right? So we saw what happened to Israel. We saw what happened to our brethren. And we saw what happened to Shiloh, where the name of the Most High God used to be, right? Where the tabernacle used to be. Then Solomon built us a temple in Jerusalem. Now he's saying, I'm going to get rid of it, the place where I put my name. That's our claim to fame. We look at, you have to imagine our mindset. Our mindset is, man, ain't nothing. God wouldn't let nothing happen. This is where his temple is. You got to imagine that's how we think it. Like, man, Jeremiah must be going crazy. It's no way that the Most High God would let some raggedy Babylonians come over here and take down our temple because that's where his name is. Why would he let something like that happen to his own spot? We, his people. Right? Keep going real quick, real quick, because we got to get to Jeremiah. In his days, Pharaoh Necho, king of Egypt, went up against the king of Assyria to the river Euphrates, and King Josiah was against him. And he mm -hmm. slew him in Megiddo when he, had, when he had seen him. And the servants carried him in a chariot. Dead from Megiddo. Jump, jump over to uh, chapter, what are we on, 23? Jump over to chapter 24. I just wanted to recap a little bit, but in the interest of time, let's go ahead and jump over to 24. Give me verse 1. In his days, Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, came up, and Jehoiakim became his servant three years. Then he turned and rebelled against and the Lord sent against him bands of the Chaldees and bands of the Syrians and bands of the Moabites and bands of the children of Ammon 
and sent them against Judah to destroy it. According to the word of the Lord, which he spake by his servants, the prophets. Truly right. At, truly at the commandment of the Lord came this upon Judah to remove them out of his sight for the sins of Manasseh, according to all that he did. And also for the innocent blood that he shed, for he filled Jerusalem with innocent blood, which the Lord would not pardon. Now the rest of the acts of Jehoiakim and all that he did, are they not written in the book of the Chronicles of the Kings of Judah? So, Jehoiakim so Nebuchadnezzar, along with all the other nations, right? Go back to where he named all the nations that came out. What Lord, verse is that? Verse 2? Yeah. And the Lord sent against him bands of the Chaldees and bands of the Syrians. No, go to verse 1 then. In his days, Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, came up, and Jehoiakim became his servant three years, and he turned and rebelled against him. Right? So Nebuchadnezzar came up against him. Right? Then he rebelled against Nebuchadnezzar. And then watch all the people that Nebuchadnezzar sent up against our people. And the Lord sent against him bands of the Chaldees, bands of the Syrians, bands of the Moabites, and bands of the children of Ammon. And so right? So look, the Chaldees is Nebuchadnezzar people. You would expect them to come. Then the Syrians came, not the Assyrians, but the Syrians. They up north of, of northern, our northern tribes, right? So they just above our northern tribes. That's the ones that David was going at it with. And then Solomon had to deal with, right? Keep going. And sent them against Judah to destroy it, according to the word of the Lord, which he spake by his servants, the prophets. Mm -hmm. Surely at the commandment so, of the Lord came. So if we look at it. They are the our surrounding nations, right? The Chaldees, they came from Nebuchadnezzar. You they were leading the charge. You got to expect them to come. That's his people, right? Then you got the uh you got the Syrians. What did it say? The Ammonites, who else? Uh Moabites. Ammonites and the Moabites, they down south and east of us. Right? And who else? That was it? Yeah. Right? So you have four nations or three nations right by us, right next door to us. And then you have the Chaldeans, who are the people of Nebuchadnezzar. They all came and they took us out at the command of Nebuchadnezzar because Jehoiakim rebelled against him. Right. When we look at that, we look at that like, oh, God just performing his his judgment against uh, against Judah, because those Judah, those people of Judah, they were rebellious against God. Right. And that's true. But it's deeper than that. You have to understand the level of rebellion. They had a warning. Go to um, go to Jeremiah chapter uh, 27. Give me verse one. It's Jeremiah chapter 27, verse one. Because years before this happened, Jeremiah talking, he's telling us what's happening. He's telling us how it's going to play out. And he's steady getting beat up for it. Right. Last week we talked about, man, punch him in his mouth. Like, yo, I'm the governor. Who are you talking to? Bow, punch Jeremiah right in his mouth. And then put him in the stocks, the book said. Put him in prison. Put him in jail. And made him sit there. Jeremiah was sick about it. He was looking like, man, all this stuff, man, I'll be trying to shut up. I'll be trying, man, I don't even want to speak the word of the Most High God because all it do is just turn into bad for me. He looked like, man, all that thing, it only turned into bad for me. I don't even want to speak the word of the Most High God. He tried to hold on to it, but he's like, man, that thing burning me, though. And he got to say it. You know what I'm saying? Like, I got to speak it. I got to say the word. I got to tell it what it is. That's how that word is. You try to sit on that thing, that thing will eat you up. Right? Remember when Yahushua was going over the scripture? He went over the scripture with the, uh, with the disciples after he rose. And they said when he went over the scripture, with it, was it not like a fire burning in our hearts? That's how the word is. When you, when you understand the word and the word is clear, when the, when the word, when understanding of the word is in you, or oh, that thing becomes like a fire. I ain't talking about you just got a Bible and you read it and you know how to repeat verses. I'm talking about when you understand what this stuff is. That thing like a fire. Can't nobody shut you up. You can't shut yourself up either. Keep going. Let's see. Uh, this is uh, this is Jeremiah chapter 27, verse 1. In the beginning of the reign of Jehoiakim, the son of Josiah, King of Judah came this word unto Je Jeremiah from the Lord, saying, Thus says the Lord to me, Make thee bands and yokes, and put them upon thy neck, and send them to the king and to the king of Moab, 
and lo the king of the ammonites and to the king uh, of tyre <clears throat> to the king of zidon by the hand of the messengers which came to jerusalem unto zedekiah king of judah and command them to say unto their masters thus says yahuwah of israel thus shall ye say unto your masters i have made the earth the man and the beast that are upon the ground by my great power and by my outstretched arm and have given it unto whom i seemed meet unto me right now, so this is the most high god sending the message through jeremiah and he's sending jeremiah uh, okay so he's sending jeremiah to all of the nations and he's telling them listen i am the most high god i own all this and whoever i deem it to be, to be appropriate to i can give it to him whoever i look out and i say you know what I want this man to rule all the world. He said, I can give it to him. Watch this. Keep going. That's what he's trying to tell him. And now I have given all these lands into the hand of Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, my servant. And the so now the we've been warned that the most high God gave all of this stuff to Nebuchadnezzar already. He's telling us this. Go back to verse one because we might have missed it. Let's go back to verse one. I just want to make sure we have crystal clear what's happening. In the beginning of the reign of Jehoiakim, the son of Josiah. In the beginning of the reign of Jehoiakim. So when Jehoiakim first set foot, Jeremiah was already talking. Nebuchadnezzar owned all of it. And that's from God. Keep going. Watch this. Came this word unto Jeremiah from the Lord, saying, Thus says the Lord unto to me, Make thee bonds and yokes and put them upon thy neck and send them to the king of Edom to the king of Moab, to the king of the Ammonites, and to the king of Tyre, and to the king of Zidon, by the hand of the messengers which came to Jerusalem unto Zedekiah, king of Judah. So look, the messengers had to be, had to, had to, so uh, when they say bonds and yoke, think of it like the, the big old wood things, like in the old days, you'll see the cows on, you know what I'm saying? Like if you, if you need a cow to pull a plow, you'll put a bond or a yoke, you'll put a yoke on his neck, you know what I'm saying, on the cow's neck. And it, and it attaches right here on their shoulder. So when the cow start moving, it pulls, right? But that's captivity because the cow can't do what he want to do. The cow is being used to work for whoever has the yoke on it, right? So now what he's saying is put these yokes on you and your messengers, right? So Jeremiah had to put one on him and then he had to get messengers. And he said, send all those messengers with those yokes to all these different na nations. So the word was given to Jeremiah. All the messengers had to go to all these different places. Imagine working for Jeremiah at this point. I got to go to all these different kings, all these people that run their own nation. And I got to tell you, yo, thus says Yahuwah. Watch what Jeremiah tell them. Watch this. Thus says Yahuwah to me, make thee bonds and yokes and put them upon thy neck and send them to the king of Edom, the king of Moab, and the king of the Ammonites, and the king of Tyre, and, the king, and to the king of Zidon. In the, by the hand of the messengers which came to Jerusalem unto Zedekiah, king of Judah. And right? Commanded. Some of these are the very same nations. The very same nations that end up taking us out. Why do you think they ended up taking us out? Let's see. Keep going. And command them to say unto their masters, Thus says Yahuwah of hosts, the God of Israel, Thus shall ye say unto your masters, I have made the earth, the man and the beast that are upon the ground. By my he said, I made the earth, the man and the, pe the, the beast that are upon the ground. And what else? By my great power and by my outstretched. And have he said, and by my great power and my outstretched arm. Me. I've given it to whom it seemed meet unto me. He said, I've given it unto whom it seems meet unto me. In other words, who it seems appropriate to me. Right. Keep going. And now have I given all these lands to the hand of Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, my servant and the beasts of the field. Have I given him also to serve him and all nations shall serve him and his son and his son. The very time of his land come and then many nations and great kings shall serve themselves of him. Right. So he's telling you, Nebuchadnezzar going to be served of all these nations. What verse is that? Uh, seven. In verse seven, he's telling you Nebuchadnezzar going to be served of all these nations. 
right? All these nations, Nebuchadnezzar is going to be served of all these nations. Then he comes back around and he tells you, but then after that, there will be kings that serve themselves of Nebuchadnezzar. Talking about Nebuchadnezzar's kingdom, right? So he's telling you it's going to be temporary is what he's trying. He's saying, look, right now, Nebuchadnezzar got it. I'm giving it to him. He going to run the whole shebang. But after that, somebody else going to run it. It's going to be multiple kings that end up splitting what he do. Right? All this is important for understanding revelations. We going to get to we going to get to, from here we going to have to get into Daniel, we going to have to get into Ezekiel, we we going to get into more Jeremiah and Isaiah, all of which tuck, touch on these same concepts. But all of that is captured in Revelation. Right? Let's keep going. This is uh this is uh verse uh eight. Past that the nation and kingdom which will not serve the same Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, and that will not put their neck under the yoke of the king of Babylon, that nation will I punish, says Yahuwah, with the right? sword. So, so he said, Listen, if you don't serve them, he's telling these nations this under, just don't lose the vision of what's happening. You have a gentleman with a yoke on his darn neck. He traveled, you know what I'm saying? Let's say 100 miles, 200 miles out, right? He and this other person's nation, and he's telling them, thus says Yahuwah, if you don't, Nebuchadnezzar got it. It's been given to him. And if you don't serve him, what's going to happen? I will punish. I will. That nation will I punish, says the Lord. Right? The if Lord. you don't serve him, I'm going to punish you. You think it's bad serving him. No, 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 no. If you don't do it, I'm going to do something to them. That's what y'all telling these people. So now the nation's got to make a choice. They got to say, all right, man, we just going to go with Nebuchadnezzar. Or they got to say, nah, man, we ain't, we ain't, but we ain't about all that. You know what I'm saying? We ain't about all that. You know what I'm saying? We're going to fend for ourselves. We're going to fight for ourselves. That's the choice they got to make. So that's why you see some of these nations, they serve in Nebuchadnezzar. That's why they came after us in the, in the 24th chapter of uh, Second Kings. Right? They came after us because they started to serve Nebuchadnezzar. What's that on the couch? That's a stain. Oh, uh, keep going. That nation will I punish, says Yahuwah, with the sword and with famine and with the pestilence until I have consumed them by his hand. Therefore, hearken not ye to your prophets, nor your diviners, nor your dreamers, nor your enchanters, nor your sorcerers, which speak unto you, saying, you shall not serve the king of Babylon. For they prophesy a lie unto you to remove you far from your land and that I should drive you out and you should perish. But the nations right. that... Go ahead, keep going. Nations that bring their neck under the yoke of the king of Babylon and serve him, those will I let remain still in their own land, says Yahuwah, and they shall right. till it and dwell therein. So he's telling them the benefit to serving the king of Babylon and just giving up is I'll let you stay in your own land. He's telling you the nations that don't do that, y'all but's going to be killed and scattered. Y'all losing y'all land. Now, I'm pretty sure if I knew history a lot better, I'm pretty sure that we will be able to tie back the people that chose to serve Babylon versus the people that didn't just by looking at who's still in their own land in that area right now. I don't know history well enough to, to deal with that. I can't connect the people well enough to deal with that. I think that. a lot of those people down there not in their land no more today. A lot of these people that's over in the Middle East, as they call it, and all this stuff, these are not the original people. A I lot of that. these people are not the original people. Like the Egyptians, for one, that's for sure. Egyptians ain't the original people, for sure. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? The people that call themselves Palestinians ain't the original people, for sure. Yeah. Right? They not... They try to make it seem like the Palestinians is the same thing as the Philistines. They not. You know what I'm saying? It's a totally different people. Uh, Philistines was like Egyptians. They was from, they was from Egypt. Same yeah, people. They were like, yeah, they was right? Like I don't think a lot of these people are the same. All right? But, you know what I'm saying? I don't know. I don't know, you know what I'm saying, the history well enough to, 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 to say it with any confidence of who is and who isn't. But based off of what it's saying here, he's telling you that's what it is. I'll let you keep your land if you serve Babylon. But Syria, too. Then I'm going to take you up. Right? Let's keep going. This is a... Uh, this is a... Uh, give me Jeremiah chapter 26. This is Jeremiah chapter 26. Give me verse 1. Watch, watch how this one start too. 
It's going to start the same way in the beginning of Joy Kim's reign. You said, what's Joy, Joy Kim had a chance to, to do something different, right? It wasn't just like the most high God just steaming ahead, like, now nah, I'm about to wipe, I'm about to let Nebuchadnezzar just take this stuff off. It's not like that was his attitude. His attitude was like, yo, 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 this is what's about to happen. This can, this can come out a little differently if you handle it right. But he yeah. told us that Nebuchadnezzar was going to run the show. All we had to do was bow down to him. Right? This is, uh, uh, this is uh, chapter 26. This is Jeremiah chapter 26, verse 1. In the beginning of the reign of Jehoiakim, the son of Josiah, king of Judah, came this word from the Lord, saying, Thus says Yahuwah, stand in the court of the Lord's house and speak unto all the cities of Judah, which come to worship in the Lord's house, all the words that I command thee to speak unto them. Diminish not a word. <clears throat> he said, don't, don't miss a darn word. Say it all. Why would he have to tell Jeremiah that? Because Jeremiah, just to, he might, you know. Try to leave a little something out. Think he's going to get put in jail again and smacked up. Exactly. They persecuting Jeremiah for this talk. Jeremiah might try to be like, well, you know what I'm saying? Well, he pretty much just said, you know what I'm saying? Jeremiah want to try, he might try to soften the blow because they putting pressure on him. Jeremiah sitting here, look, man, I wish I was never born. When you got that type of mind, most like God got to tell you, you know what I'm saying? This, y'all, y'all view of God has to be, you know what I'm saying? Like we have to update our view of God. Because we've been corrupted. We like to imagine the most high God that will come in the life that we have right now. That'll come and, and hold us and cherish us and hold our hand. That's not the idea of God that we've been showed in the scripture. That is what he says to us. That's what's going to happen for us in the end. When we make it, the man is going to comfort us. The book say he's going to comfort us like our moms. That's what the book say. Books say the Most High God going to comfort us like a mother would, right? But as we're in the middle of it, he ain't trying to comfort no. Listen, the Most High God is telling you, don't you admit it. Jeremiah, just last week we read about Jeremiah crying to the Most High God like, man, I wish I was never here. Every time I open my mouth about you, something bad happened to me. These boys don't respect it. They don't respect you. I'm just getting beat up out here for it. And all I'm doing is doing the right thing. Most High God response to this is, Look, say this to him too, and don't diminish a word of it. Don't take it easy on these boys. They ain't going to take it easy on you either. Why wait until we get to Ezekiel? He started Ezekiel because he already saw what happened with Jeremiah. He started Ezekiel off right. Listen, these boys going to be tough now. <laughs> he tells Ezekiel, it's going to be rough now, but you're going to have a hard face to these boys just like they're going to have a hard face to you. You got to tell them because it's going to get rough. That's the expectation we got to set for ourselves. We can't set it no expectation like, oh, we're going to get a break. If we get a break, that's good, right? But that's not the expectation we got to have for ourselves. Right? The expectation is no matter what happens, we got to push through. Even if it look easy for Brother Phil and it look hard for Brother T, guess what? I got to take whatever come to me because it's not, about, it's not about what's happening right now, right? It's only about what is going to happen in the end for us. We got to keep our mind focused on what's at the end. We can't be comparing ourselves to everybody else. Like, oh, man, brother, you know what I'm saying? This brother got it easy or this brother got it too hard or this brother. That stuff is a trap. Just focus on what the most high God put in front of you because you don't know the gift that he got for you at the end. How you going to know if you don't know the scripture? How you going to know if you ain't obeying his word? This is, uh, this is uh, Jeremiah chapter uh, 26, verse what, 2? Zahar, right, give me a water. Thus says the Lord, stand in the court of the Lord's house and speak unto all the cities of Judah, which come to worship the Lord's house. All the words that I command thee to speak unto them, diminish not a word. If so be, they will hearken and turn every man from his evil. I may repent me of the evil, which I purpose to do unto mm -hmm. them because of the evil of their doings. And thou shalt say unto them, thus says Yahuwah, if ye will not hearken to me to walk in my law, which I have set before you, to hearken to the words of my servants, the prophets, whom I sent unto you, both rising up early in the morning and sending them, not hearken. Then will I make the house like Shiloh, and I will make this city a curse to all the nations of the earth. So, the so look, he said, look, if you don't listen to the prophets, I'm going to make the house in Judah just like I did Shiloh. What do you think that means? 
You ain't getting taken away. He said, I'm getting rid of this thing. He warned us. So if we got it in our mind, like, man, God would never. That don't make no sense. This is where God's house is. He would never do that. Jeremiah already told the people. The Most High God said he will make this place just like Shiloh. Shiloh is in Ephraim. Ephraim is out of here. Them boys, boy, gone. But that's how the Most High God is. It's not that we don't have warning. It's that we don't pay attention. The word is here. The word, us, we got the whole word in front of us. The whole book in front of us. And the average of us do not pay attention to it. It's people sitting in these Hebrew camps, sitting in these churches every week, every day, watching videos, doing all this stuff, looking at stuff on social media, doing everything every day and still is missing what the scripture is saying. All because we're not paying attention, all because we focus on getting somebody the scripture that feeds us rather than how we can serve the most high God. If you look into the book like, oh, I'm feeling bad today. I just, you know, let me just find a word, you know what I'm saying, to help me out with how I'm feeling. Right? If that's how you approach the book, you're doing it all wrong. You're doing it all wrong. You cannot approach the book looking for what you want to find. You got to approach the book as an empty vessel, letting it fill you up and letting it keep fill you up. Because once it fills you up, it's going to be like the, you remember the, uh, y'all remember when uh, Alicia, was it Elijah or Alicia? Well, what? I think it was Elijah. You know what I'm saying? You remember when Elijah, you know what I'm saying? He had the, uh, the vessels that he filled up with oil or was it? Yeah, oil. He filled it up with oil. Right. And the woman was like, well, we really ain't got a whole lot of oil. But then they filled it up and they just kept on filling it up. They filled up one and they used that one to fill up the other ones and it just never ran out. When the Most High God fill you up with understanding and wisdom and righteousness, it never runs out. But the first thing you got to do, you got to be willing to fill yourself up first. And the only way to do that is to approach the book empty. I'm looking at it. Forget everything I knew. Forget everything I believe. What does the book say? What do I read right now in front of the book? Once you do that and that thing starts filling you up, man, you'll be able to pour out for the rest of your darn life. Ain't none of these boys stop you. Book tell you, y'all should have told us out of his own darn mouth. He said, can't nobody gain say you. It can't be done. Nobody. Who going to speak against the darn truth? It can't be done. These boys just running their darn mouth. I don't worry about none of these boys. All these people just running their darn mouth. How you going to argue against truth? Only thing, bless you. you only thing you're going to be able to do is have, have opinion. You have to, only thing you're going to be to tell people what you prefer and what you think. And that's fine. If the conversation go to what you prefer and think, all right, I'm done. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm not here to talk about what we prefer and think. I'm here to talk about what's written. Let's, uh, let's keep going. What verse we on? Oh. Six. Keep then going. will I make this house like Shiloh and make this city a curse to all the nations of the earth. So the priests and the prophets and all the people heard Jeremiah speaking these words in the house of the Lord. Now Jeremiah. Look, look how they room. reacted. Because he's talking about our house. He's talking about the temple. Right? So he said the people heard him talking about the house of Yahuwah. Watch what they say. They didn't like that. So the how you imagine how we felt Jeremiah pop up and he's talking about, yo, all this about to get done in. All this about to be destroyed. How do you think we going to feel about that? Exactly. This is exactly what happened with Yahushua. We don't have to get it, but this is exactly what happened with Yahushua. Think about the similarities of what you know about Yahushua when you read this. Watch this. So the priests and the prophets and all the people heard Jeremiah speaking these words in the house of the Lord. Now came the pastor Jeremiah end up speaking all that the Lord had commanded him to speak unto all the people that the priests and the prophets and the people took him, saying, Thou shalt surely die. Why hast thou prophesied in the name of the Lord, saying, The house shall be like Shiloh, and the city shall be desolate without an, any an inhabitant? And all right, he said, were, Why would you prophesy in the name of Yahuwah, talking about the house going to be like Shiloh, and the city going to be desolate? He said, You're going to surely die. Right, keep going. And all the people were gathered against Jeremiah in the house of the Lord. And when the princes of Judah heard these 
Then they came up from the king's house unto the house of the Lord and sat down in the entry of the new gate of the Lord's house. Mm -hmm. then, spake, then spake the priests and the prophets unto the princes and to all the people, saying, This man is worthy to die, for he has prophesied against this city, as ye have heard with your own ears. Right? So they said, look, y'all heard him with it on here. He ready to die. You remember when Yahushua? Yahushua said in three days, you know what I'm saying? This, the, I'll destroy this temple and rebuild it. Right? And they said, oh, look, he prophesied against the city. He prophesied against the temple. That's what they tried to convict Yahushua of. Right? So it's the same thing. When they asked him, they said, you know what I'm saying? They said, they said you know what I'm saying? Just tell us plainly. Who are you? Yahushua didn't answer. And the high priest said, I adjure you. Mo Yahushua, he, got to, he has to submit to the high priest because he's the ruler of the land. That's law, right? So he said, I adjure you. After that, Yahushua said, you know what I'm saying? In the clouds, you're going to see the son of man. Right? And they said, ah, did you hear him? What else? What, else? what more evidence do we need is what they said. What more evidence do we need? Did everybody hear him? That's the same thing they said. Y'all heard what he just said? He prophesied about to say, hey, what, up? what more do we need? What else do we need to hear? Put them to death, right? But watch this. Then spake Jeremiah unto all the priests and all the people, saying, The Lord sent me, Yahuwah sent me to prophesy against this house and against the city, all the words that you heard. Therefore, now amend your ways and your doings and obey the voice of Yahuwah your God, and you will repent him of the evil. Notice that how he, he don't back off. Right? They at him, but look, he looking like Yahuwah sent me to say these words. Therefore, y'all better amend your way. In other words, y'all better, y'all better repent. Or else everything I just said gonna happen. Watch, keep going. As for me, behold, I am in your hand. Do with me as good lead unto you. But that if you put me to death, you shall surely bring innocent blood upon yourselves and upon the city and upon the inhabitants thereof. For of a truth, Yahuwah has sent me unto you to speak all these words in your ears. Then said the princes and all the people unto the priests and to the prophets, this man is not worthy to die for he has spoken to us in the name of Yahuwah our God. All right, so now they're deliberating. They're looking like, I don't know. I don't know if we should kill him now. You know what I'm saying? He say he's coming from the, in the name of Yahuwah. I don't think we can kill him for that. Right? But watch this. Keep going. Then rose up certain other elders of the land and to all the assembly of the people, saying, Micah, the Morshite, prophesied in the day of Kaya, king of Judah, and spake to all the people of Judah, saying, Thus says the Lord of hosts, Zion shall be Cloud like a field, and Jerusalem shall become heaps in the mountain of the house of the high pre the high places of a forest. Did Hezekiah, king of Judah, and all Judah put him all to death? Did he right? not fear you? So Yahuwah now he, he, he brought Yahuwah? us back. That's why it's important to know history, y'all. That's why it's important. To, that's why our history is important because it has to guide what we do in the future. Right? We look to the history. This is what Paul was trying to explain. You know, Paul knew our scriptures. Right. So that's what Paul was trying to exp explain, I think, in the in the 10th chapter of Corinthians, if I'm not mistaken. First he was trying to he was trying to explain. He said he said everything from a four time is for an example for us. Right. It was written as an example for us. So now. The the princes, the rulers here, they can look back and when they look back and they say they looking like, well, listen, Micah, the Morishite. Right. And we read a little bit of Michael. We still got to we still got to finish out Michael. We didn't read it all. But we read a little bit about Michael, who was prophesying during the times of Hezekiah. Right. And he said, look, Michael, the Morishai was talking about Zion was going to be destroyed. Hezekiah and kill him. Right. Why would why would we try to get Jer uh, Jeho uh, 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 Jeremiah? Not Jeremiah. Uh, Jehoiakim. Why would we try to get Jehoiakim to kill him? That doesn't make sense. Right? So he's, he's making that distinction like, do we have standing to really kill this man? We know we had a good king in Hezekiah and he wouldn't have done it. Are we sure that this is the right thing to do here? That's wisdom. That comes from knowing our history and knowing our scriptures. Right? Keep going. Did Hezekiah and all Judah put him to death? Did he fear? Did he not fear the Lord and besought the Lord? And the Lord repented of the evil which he had pronounced. Thus might we procure? Thus might we procure great evil against our souls? And there was also a man that prophesied in the name of the Lord, Uriah, the son of 
Shemaiah of Kiriath Jerem, who prophesied against this city and against this, this land, according to all the words of Jeremiah. And when Jehoiakim the king, with all his mighty men, all the princes heard his words, the king sought to put him to death. But when Uriah heard it, he was afraid and fled and went into Egypt. And Jehoiakim the king sent men into Egypt, namely El Nathan, the son of the certain men with him into Egypt. And they fed forth Uriah out of Egypt and brought him unto Jehoiakim the king, who slew him with the sword and cast his dead body to the graves of the common people. So now he's showing you the difference between Hezekiah and Jehoiakim. He's showing you the difference, right? These are the reasons that, that the Most High God let this happen and made this happen for Jehoiakim. Because during Hezekiah's reign, Michael was telling you, look, Zion was going to be destroyed. Then you had some other little prophet that we don't even have no documentation of. He telling us, but it was another prophet that was telling, that boy got ran off into Egypt. Jehoiakim didn't stop there. He chased him down into Egypt and had him killed. With this context, you can see this ain't no accident. It you you most I got been talking about Babylon is gonna come get Israel since the days of Hezekiah. Right? That's the first time that Isaiah the prophet mentioned Babylon was gonna come get Israel. He told Hezekiah, he's like, you showed them everything. Okay, they're gonna take everything out of here. That's the first time this happened. Since then, there's been several kings, right? Hezekiah had a son named Manasseh. Manasseh messed up. Babylon came and got him, didn't he? And then he repented. He came back, started getting stuff together, started doing the right thing by the Most High God. Babylon didn't take the land. Manasseh had a son. His name was what? Ammon? Yeah. Then Ammon, you know what I'm saying? Ammon didn't do the right thing. Babylon didn't come and get us through during, you know what I'm saying, a little bit of friction, but Babylon didn't come and get us during Ammon time. Then Ammon had Josiah. Josiah tried to clean it up. Didn't happen during Josiah time. Then Josiah had Jehoaz. Right? Egypt came and got him, and now we on Jehoiakim. So it don't have to happen. This thing could have just kept going. It's going to happen eventually. It didn't have to happen to Jehoiakim, but Jehoiakim was rebellious. He didn't want to take heed to the word of the Most High God coming from any of the prophets. Instead, he's sitting here chasing the prophets down. So now you got to think about it from Jeremiah's point of view. This is happening to prophets that speak against this city under this king. That's why the Most High God got to tell him, don't diminish a word. Don't your butt be scary. Say exactly how I say it. Whatever come with it, come with it. And you see, that's exactly, exactly what Jeremiah's attitude is. He said, listen, of a truth, I'll come to you from Yahuwah. However, Whatever you want to do to me, I'm in your hands. However, surely innocent blood to be on your hand because I'm telling you I'm coming from Yahuwah. Right? That is the mindset. That is the mindset. He not ducking. He not hiding. He not running. The other prophet ran to Egypt. And maybe God told him to. I don't know. Because remember, he told Elijah to run. Right? But if the Most High God don't tell him to run, you got to stand there and you take whatever come with it. You do the right thing and you take whatever comes with it. That's where the glory of the Most High God is magnified. That's how the Most High God can show his work. Bunch of people come up to you. It's easy. Look, it's easy when it's, when it's big stuff. Bunch, bunch of people come up to you and say, look, read the, read the Bible one more time and I'm going to shoot you in the head. You're supposed to pick that thing up and read it. Because that's when it, that's when you're going to see a miracle. That's when the Most High God going to Bullet gonna come, most like God gonna stop that thing like the Matrix. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Everybody gonna be looking like, I'm telling you, I saw the bullet stop. That's when the miracle is. It's just that we be too scared. We be too scared, so we be trying to duck and hide. Type of stuff we'll do is somebody got a gun to our head, tell us stop reading the Bible. You know what we'll do? I mean, I'm gonna put the Bible down, but he didn't know that I had the Bible app in my in my earbud and I was listening to it still. So technically, I was still listening to the Bible, but he didn't know that. No, most High guy ain't got no glory from that. You got to do it openly. No, nope, I'm still reading it right in front of you. Shoot me. Right. I'm doing what the most high God told me to do. Shoot me. Do whatever you got to do. When you got that attitude, most High got to show up. So now 
Jeremiah looking like I'm on the brink of death. Look, somebody about to kill me. Only thing he can say is, look, whatever you're going to do to me, go ahead and do it. But listen, I'm going to tell you for sure, you going to have innocent blood on your hands because uh, I'm coming in the name of Yahuwah. And at that moment, Jeremiah probably thought, that's it. I'm dead. They got me. Right. But then one of the rulers like, yeah, 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 yeah. Let's, let's, let's think about this, guys. Y'all remember Micah the Morishite. Has a guy didn't kill him. And Jer uh, Je Jehoiakim, that boy killed the other boy that ran off into Egypt. He's drawing the difference between the two kings. Watch this. Keep going. And they fed forth Uriah out of Egypt and brought him to Jehoiakim, the king who slew the sword and cast his dead body in the graves of the common people. Nevertheless, the hand of Ahikam, the son of Shaphan, was with Jeremiah that they should not give him into the hand of the people to put him to death. Right, so they ended up saving him. Right, so uh, uh, go back to uh, go back to Second Kings, Second Kings twenty four. The Second Kings chapter twenty four. Give me verse one again. In his days, Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, came up, and Jehoiakim became his servant three years, and he turned right. So Babylon. now. Jehoiakim became the servant of Nebuchadnezzar. What that means is that even though Jehoiakim is the king of Israel, he had to do what Nebuchadnezzar said. Right? This is the prophecy that Jeremo uh, uh, Jeremiah was just saying. Like, you need to submit yourself to Nebuchadnezzar. Had he done that, this would look very different. But look what happened next. And the Lord sinned against them bands of the Chaldees. No, nah, before that. Oh. And Jehoiakim became his servant three years. Then he turned and rebelled against him. Then he turned and rebelled against him. That's where he messed up. Most of God told him, he's like, listen, anybody, look, the yoke, Look, I've given it all to Nebuchadnezzar. The whole thing, Nebuchadnezzar. Put your neck in the yoke. You serve him. If you serve him, you can stay in your land. That's what we just read. That's what Jeremiah just said to all the kings. Right? So now, Jehoiakim got to make a decision. He's serving him for three years. At the end of three years, he's like, man, I ain't about to serve this, man. I'm an Israelite. It's the same attitude that our Israelite brothers got today. They're telling you, no, man, it's against our law. It's against our law to vote. Like, stop that line. What's wrong with y'all? You know, they all these people with the antichrist. Hey, right, man, shut up. Y'all talking about? It. You don't even know what you're talking about. Can you imagine one of our Israelite brethren today saying anything gracious to 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 Biden? We about to read, right? We about to read. Okay. Who we got? Uh, keep and actually keep going. I just want to get to this one part real quick. And the Lord sent against him bands of the Chaldees, bands of the Syrians, and bands of the Moabites, and bands of the children of Ammon, and sent them against Judah to destroy it, according to the word of the Lord, which he spake by his servants the prophets. Mm -hmm. Truly, at the commandment of the Lord came this upon Judah to remove them out of his sight for the sins to of do Manasseh, what? according to all that he did. He said to do what now? To remove them out of his sight. To remove them out of his sight. So not only did these people come to take our land and to beat us up and to burn our stuff and kill us. They also came to remove us. Right? So they captured some of us. Grab Daniel chapter one. This is Daniel chapter one. It's Daniel chapter 1, verse 1. Watch what the book say. In the third year of the reign of Jehoiakim, king of Judah. In the what? 
Third year in the reign of Jehoiakim. In the third year in the reign of Jehoiakim, what happened? King of Judah came Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, Jerusalem, and besieged it. So for three years, he served the king of Babylon. At the beginning of his reign, the king of Babylon was like, yo, yo, yo. That's the same time in the beginning of his reign that Jeremiah was giving him the instruction. Like, listen, sir, the king of Babylon. He was doing it. Three years he did it. But in the third year, he rebelled. And in the third year, they came and got him. Watch what Daniel say. And the Lord gave Jehoiakim, king of Judah, into his hand, which part of the vessels of the house of God, which he carried unto the land to, of Shinar to the, to the house of his God, brought the vessels into the treasure house of his God. And the right? King so look, the uh, Babylon was somewhere where Iraq is now, where Iraq is. So if you look on the map where Iraq is, that's he carried it from Israel to Iraq. Right. Matter of fact, Babylon, if I'm not mistaken, is like where they put one of the U.S. bases, like it's near that area. Right. So they carried it from 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 Israel to Iraq and took our vessels out of the out of the temple. You got to understand what happened. They took the vessels out of the temple. And what else did they do, Daniel? Watch this. And the king spake unto Ashpenaz, the master, that he should bring certain of the children of Israel and of the king's seed and of the princes. Children in whom was no blemish, but well favored and skillful in all wisdom and cunning and knowledge and understanding science and such as had ability in them to stand in the king's palace and to whom they might teach the learning of the tongue of the Chaldean. Right. So he took the elites, right, the upper class, those that were that, that had understanding and those that had blood of royalty. Right. He took all those people and brought them into Babylon. Daniel was one of them. Watch this. Keep going. And the king appointed them a daily provision of the king's meat and of the wine which he drank. So nourishing them three years that at the end thereof, they might stand before the king. Now, among these were the children of Judah, Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, unto whom the prince of the eunuchs gave names, for he gave unto Daniel the name of Belteshazzar. And Hananiah, Shadrach, and to Mishael, Meshach, and to Azariah, Abednego. Right? So now they changed their names, right? Tell me how in Daniel's, when he was in captivity, tell me how Daniel said, I refuse to be called by that name. That's a that's a Gentile name. That's an unclean name. His name is what was Daniel's name? Uh, Belteshazzar. You do y'all know what that means? That's talking about another God. Baal? That's talking about another God. That's talking about a Babylonian God. Tell me how, tell me, show me how Daniel was like, this is an unclean name. I refuse to be called by this name. Kill me before I'm called for that. No, he answered to it. Keep going, watch. We're going to read it. We're about to read this whole book. The whole book of Daniel. We're about to read the whole thing. And y'all going to see the attitude of our Israelite brethren now. You would think we would be more humble now coming out of the worst captivity that we've had as a people. You would think our, our, we would be so just humble, like, oh, the humility would be through the roof at this point. But no, we more stubborn now than we have been. Because it's not real to us. A lot of people don't realize that. The, these, these, these Hebrew Israelites that be standing up here doing all that extra stuff, talking all that crazy stuff, one, they won't bust a grape. None of them, none of them gonna bust a grape. They just gonna keep fighting with their own people. Ain't none of them gonna take the take the heat that they got, you know what I'm saying, and go take it to the government. They ain't gonna do it. They're not about that life. They cutting deals with the government. They got informants running around with them. All this stuff, they all wicked. Right? They not about what they talk about. But even if they were, they would come to a failure. Because that's not the order that the Most High God set it up in. We have to be subject to authority. What does subject to authority mean? Does that mean whatever they say you do, no matter if it's right or wrong? No. That means whatever consequence come with it, you got to take it. You ain't running. You ain't ducking. You ain't hiding. When they come and try to put you in cuffs, you got to be like this. 
You right. Your law did say I can't do that. You will see that is the order. Every man of God that is faced with that type of situation, every single one of them, you will see you're not going to find one man of God that's fight, that fighting the power. Not one. Now, we consider it weak. Our Hebrew Israelite brethren, they consider it weak. But you won't find one that's in there rebelling against a king, rebelling against somebody that the Most High God gave authority over. That's crazy. It don't make sense. They ain't from the spirit of God. That's from that other stuff. Y'all got other spirits running in y'all. Y'all don't know our history. Y'all don't know the book. These boys running around talking about they know the law all day. These boys don't know no law. They don't know our history. They don't know this book. They don't know the prophecy. They just know what they went to the book and looked for. Let me see where I can find something that looked like the Edomites are the Jewish people today. They go looking for something to prove whatever they think already. Can't approach the book like that. You end up, yeah, that stuff will end up confusing you. You approach the book, just read it. That's why we read it from page to page, right? And we keep going. And after we get to the end, what was that, 2021? I think 2021, we reached the end. And guess what? All right. We took like maybe three, not three weeks off, but we took about three weeks to just cover topics. And after that, we said, all right, back in Genesis. You know what I'm saying? Let's start back in Genesis. That's how I go. We've been doing this for years. It might be our third, fourth time just doing Bible studies right through the book. Right? Because what else are we doing? Sure, I could pick up the book and I could say, okay, let me teach you on. I did a, a you know what I'm saying? We did a special, what was it? Uh, for a Day of Atonement, maybe? We did a couple specials in Day of Atonement, Day of Tabernacles, uh, Day of uh, Day of Trumpets. We did we did some special topics. We did marriage and we did something else, I think. Right. But you can't do that unless you've already taken the time to learn from the book. It's too many brothers out here. They jumping out to try to teach topics and, oh, let me show you this new doctrine. You know what I'm saying? Nobody taught it like this. But they haven't taken time to actually just sit down and learn what the book is saying. Learn the intricacies. Learn the stuff that, like, is boring. You know what I'm saying? A lot of people look at this, the, the Kings and the Chronicles stuff, and they be like, oh, that part boring. You're talking about the King. What? You know what I'm saying? You, you don't know what you darn talk about. You think that's the boring part? That's where the action is. It's my favorite. Yeah, when I first read it, numbers, counting all the people, and then the, the genealogies, I was like, okay, all right. But it's a huge significance in it. Hard to understand, though. Man, can't nobody lie to you when you know the truth. So you when I so, so when I finally so when I finally started to kind of understand that that was important, the first time I went back to the New Testament and read about how um in Matthew Yahshua all the way back to Adam, or in Luke how they track Yahshua all the way back to Adam, and in Matthew how they track Yahshua all the way back to David, I was like, I was like, okay, you know what I'm saying? Like, I get it now. Yeah, this stuff matters. <laughs> this stuff matters. Keep going, watch this. All the way back to Adam, though. That's crazy. I wish we could do that thing now. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. One day, though, Elijah, book say Elijah gonna come. You know what I'm saying? Yahushua said Elijah gonna come and be restorer of all things. You know what I'm saying? So, you know what I'm saying? I believe, I believe before Yahushua come back, Elijah gonna, he gonna guide us back. You know what I'm saying? He probably gonna be able to connect us back to our father. That's what he said. The, uh, the prophecy say that Elijah gonna, you know what I'm saying, turn the hearts of the fathers back to the sons and the sons back to the fathers. You know what I'm saying? But you know what I'm saying? I think, uh, you know what I'm saying? I'm hoping that the most I got, you know what I'm saying, connect us back to our fathers. You know what I'm saying? So I know what tribe I'm from. You know what I'm saying? And my lineage. You know what I'm saying? Because these people stole our history. They stole, they broke our lineage and they stole it from us. You know what I'm saying? Stole our, our, our heritage. Right? And that's all according to the prophecy of the most High God. They don't know what they're doing. They a foolish nation. Right. In they mind they ain't doing it. Just like in Nebuchadnezzar's mind, he didn't know that the most high God gave him all the land. All he know is I'm trying to get it. Nebuchadnezzar just said, look, all Nebuchadnezzar thinking is I want to rule the world. He don't know that the most high God was like, I gave you this world and I'm going to take it from you when I'm when I'm done with you. That's not in his mind, just like the king of Assyria, when he was the rod of uh, the most high God anger. You know what I'm saying? He didn't know it wasn't in his mind to, to do do the most high God will. All he know is I want to rule country. The benefit that we, everything going to go the way the Most High God wanted, regardless. The benefit that we have is we can be knowledgeable of the plan. 
and we can work with the plan as opposed to against it. If we do that, then we all right. We just got to take this stuff serious. We can't be playing around. A lot of people just out here playing around and want to look good, want, want glory from men. They want people to say how smart they are and how much they how much they know the scripture and how righteous, righteous they are. Oh, man, you can't get hung up in all that. And we all likely get hung up in that stuff, especially the people that take the position of teaching. It's a temptation to get hung up in all that stuff. You got to keep yourself in check, though. That stuff is a trap. That stuff is a trap. You know what I'm saying? That's why these boys fall into bad doctrine and just get stuck in it. Get stuck in it. Can't move. I talk to these boys every day, and they can't move out of the bad doctrine. They can't even see that what they believe ain't, even, ain't in the book. Breaks my heart, too. I'll be looking at it like, man, it's right there, though. Keep going. Let's see what the book says. But Daniel proposed in his heart that he would not defile himself with the portion of the king's meat. It's for you, Sharon. <laughs> so now look at this. We have a law. Our law doesn't say a man cannot be called by another name, right? Even if it has a, a foreign god or a pagan god's name in it. Right? Our law says nothing about that. We ain't got no law about how a boy or a man or a woman or can be named. So if he names him and he says, Belshazzar, that's your name. And Baal is talking about a uh, Babylonian God. Right? There's no law against that. So you don't see Daniel make a stand up about it. You can look at it and be like, oh, Daniel, we got to never let nobody call me that. That's fine. You can say that. But then in the next verse, he tell you, when they tried to feed me unclean food, though, that's not happening. Why? Because that's our law. Daniel keeps the law, not no fairy tale stuff y'all be making up. No stuff to make yourself feel and, you know what I'm saying, fill yourself up with pride. No, I'm an Israelite. I'm going to change my name to, you know what I'm saying? These boys be changing their name to all types of stuff. Which is fine. I, ain't, I, ain't, I don't want to diminish them. Let me, let me be clear. I don't want to diminish the brothers for changing their name. You change your name if you want to change your name. You know what I'm saying? But y'all got to focus on the stuff that matters. Right? It's a lot of people that won't even say God. They uncomfortable with saying God because they say God is the name of a, of a pagan God. A lot of people that won't say Lord because Lord is related to a pagan God. Right? All these things, they thinking there's no law against the man. Daniel was named after a God. A pagan God. And they had nothing to say to say about it. And we're gonna learn that he answered to it. But when they tried to feed him unclean food, guess what? That's our law. He said, I'm still an Israelite now. I'm in captivity. I'm still an Israelite. It's my law. I ain't eating no unclean food. That's crazy. He looked at it, he said, That's crazy. I'm not breaking the law now. That's crazy. So look, look at what he did nor with the wine which he drank. Therefore, he request, requested of the prince of the eunuchs that he might not defile himself. Now, God had brought Daniel into favor and tender love with the prince of the eunuchs. And the prince of the eunuchs said unto Daniel, I fear my lord, the king, who has appointed me your meat and your drink. For why should he see your faces worse, worse liking than the children which are of your sort? Then right, so what, he, what he's saying is the king set this up purposely to feed them and to, and to groom them for three years because he's preparing them to serve the king right talking about king of babylon so the king of babylon is sitting there like okay listen get these boys ready you got to teach them how we talk we got to teach them how we do things teach them our etiquette feed them what we eat make sure they strong make sure they good he looking like oh well we were supposed to go over there and get the people of royalty, the people that's healthy, the people that do good, the people that feel good, right? He said, it wouldn't make sense for us to say, I went and got Daniel. We renamed him to Belshazzar, and now he all skinny and weak and, and sick after three years. And he thinking that if he only eats what he said he want to eat, if he don't defile himself with the food, in their mind, they looking like, no, nah, this food make you healthy. Daniel looking like, no, nah, that stuff will make, no, nah, that's not food. That's not, we're not supposed to be eating that. Right? We're not supposed to be eating that. That's not food. So they looking like, okay, 
Well, if you only eat vegetables, if you only eat vegetation, fruits and vegetables and stuff, you're going to be weak. You ain't going to, the other boy's going to look stronger than you. You're going to be all skinny and all messed up. Right? Let's see what happens. Then shall ye make me endanger my head to the king. Then, then said Daniel to Melzar, whom the prince of the eunuchs had set over Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, prove thy servants, I beg thee, beseech thee, ten days, and let them give us pulse to eat and water to drink. And let our countenance be looked upon before thee and the countenance of the children that eat of the portion of the king's meat. And as thou seest, deal with thy servants. So he consented to them in this matter and proved them ten days. And at the end of the 10 days, their countenance appeared fairer and fatter in flesh than all the children which did eat the portions of the king's meat. Thus Melzer took away the portion of their meat and the wine that they should drink and gave them pulse. All right. So now pulse, when they say pulse, it's talking about stuff that grow from the ground. Right. So he he only fed them fruits and vegetables. Right. And they had to eat only fruits and vegetables. At first, he was looking like, nah, man, y'all might come out. So Daniel was like, no, 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 no. Give us 10 days. For 10 days, let us only eat water and fruits and vegetables. Let the other folks eat whatever they eat. And then you judge for yourself after 10 days. They did it. After 10 days, the boy was like, oh, y'all look all right. You know, these boys look all right. Because the most high God looked over them. Keep going. Watch this. As for these four children, God gave them knowledge and skill and all learning and wisdom. And Daniel had understanding in all visions and dreams. Now, at the end of the Look, day, God gave them knowledge in what? Daniel had in visions, all visions and dreams. No, no, no. Before that. And skill and all learning and wisdom. And he gave had, them skill in all learning and wisdom? Yep. Or is it just Israelite learning and wisdom? All learning and wisdom. Y'all got to understand what y'all dealing with. Right? Look, my kid, my kid, my, my son, last night, every night, right? Because, you know, it's Christmas time now. So every night, if he got an assignment that got something to do with Christmas, holiday, he bring it up to me. He was like, Dad, I got I to gotta do this homework. Do I do it or not do it? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? He give it to it. Is this something I can do or not do? And I read it to him. I'm like, okay, well, let me ask you. Let me see what they asking you to do. The one it asked him, it says, did you know about the Christmas tradition of pickle in a tree or something? something? I, I, I ain't never heard. I used to celebrate Christmas. I ain't never heard no darn pickle in a darn tree. They ain't seem homosexual to me. But I said, all right, I don't know what a pickle in the tree is, son. Let's keep reading. It said pickle in the tree is when you do such and such and such and such. I said, oh, OK. Then they say, do you have um, it says, are you familiar with that tradition? And tell us about your favorite holiday tradition. I said, yes, you can complete this assignment. Right? I don't mind him learning about their stuff. That don't bother me. I just don't want you to participate in it. I don't want them to make you feel like you have to participate. But we should be wise in all their stuff if the opportunity. We shouldn't break our necks to try to learn all their stuff. Who cares about breaking that? But if it's in front of us, if it's presented to us, we shouldn't close our ears to try to learn about what these foolish people do. If somebody presents something to us, we should learn it. Yeah, I get it. Okay, let me understand what you do. Okay, I understand. Oh, okay. Now I understand why you're an idiot. Right? Now I understand why somebody, now I understand why you don't make no sense. Now I understand why somebody fooled you. I understand why you made the choices you with. They ain't gonna do nothing but make us better. We don't have to be scared. There ain't no hocus pocus behind this stuff that's gonna take us over. We just don't participate in their foolishness. We don't participate in their witchcraft. Right? But Daniel learned all that stuff and was skillful. In other words, he, under, he understood the foolishness that they was doing. And then you're going to see this is how Daniel and the brethren, the, the three other brethren, this is how all of them, all these chapters that we're going to read out of Daniel, you're going to see how we dealt differently because of the wisdom. Most High God blessed them with that type of wisdom. And it made them deal with people differently. It gave them a different level of favor, right? We can have that. All we got to do is pay attention and learn the book first. Notice that Daniel didn't start with, 
oh, well, let me learn with all your magic and all this stuff. He didn't start with that. Let me learn all of your today. He didn't start with that. He started with the law. He said, look, 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 look. I can't eat that because that's against our law. You can say you can see he uh, upholds the law and he's knowledgeable about the law. He start there. And once you have that intact, man, can't nobody lie to you. You know how to separate. Look, wisdom is being able to separate good from bad. It's good information. It's bad information. You cannot. The beginning of wisdom is the fear of the most high God. You can't have no wisdom if, until you fear God. And you can't fear God unless you know the scripture. Right? So once you know the scripture and you have a strong fear of God, any other information that come to you, you know how to divide it. You know how to look at it and be like, nope, that's against the word. That's, that's out. Right? You, you foolish for following that. If you follow that, that don't make sense because that's against my scripture. That is not against the scripture. That's wide open. You know, maybe there's some truth to it, maybe whatever. You know what I'm saying? But you can divide everything that you hear, everything that you experience. Once you understand what is wrong and what is not wrong, you can divide it. And that's what Daniel is able to do. And that's why you're going to see that in what we read in the book of Daniel. Oh, man, that's a bad boy. Keep going. How much we got left? A little bit. Huh? At the end of the days, about three verses. All right. Now, at the end of the days that the king had said he should bring them in, then the prince of the eunuchs brought them in before Nebuchadnezzar. And the king communed with them. And among and the them, king what? All were found, the king communed with them. Uh huh. And among them, all was found none like Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. Therefore stood they before the king. And in all manners of wisdom and understanding that the king inquired of them, he found. Ten times better than all the magicians and astrologers that were in his realm. And Daniel continued even unto the first year of King Cyrus. So you got to think about it. The king is now asking Daniel and the brethren directly questions. And we don't know exactly what all these questions are, but you got to imagine some of those questions are political questions. Some of those questions probably like, yo, you know what I'm saying? How do you think I should rule the people today? You know what I'm saying? Like, how do you think I should do this? How do you think people will respond if I did X, Y, and Z? What should I do with my wife when she did X, Y, and Z? Like, he probably asked them a wide range of stuff. Think about all the stuff that Daniel might have had to be familiar with in terms of the Babylonian customs. You don't see Daniel. You ain't, you don't, you, these people is all sinners that Daniel dealing with right now. You don't see Daniel's attitude. Y'all some sinners. I'm not sitting down with y'all. I'm not, I'm not even about to eat with the king of Nebuchadnezzar because he took over my land and killed my people. That could have been his attitude. What's the difference of the folks that brought us into slavery, the folks that took, took our land, that's in our land right now, and masquerading themselves as us? What's the difference between what we see right now and Nebuchadnezzar? Nebuchadnezzar is the man who did it to Daniel. That's the man who did it. He's sitting across the table from him having a conversation, answering questions and serving them. Now, I want one Hebrew Israelite to tell me that Daniel saw. Daniel weak. Daniel a sellout. If a brother did it today, y'all call him a sellout. If a brother did what Daniel was doing right now, today, y'all would call him a sellout. And that is the very reason the stuff that's talked about in Revelations that's going to deceive a lot of people and have them worshiping a false prophet. That is the very reason it's going to happen that way. Because the people that y'all think are the ones that's coming in the name of the Most High God are not. And the people that y'all think are the false prophets are the ones that's coming in the name of the Most High God. The ones y'all don't get no attention to, the ones that y'all... Y'all fight again. Those are the ones coming in the name of the most high God. And I'm not saying this happened yet. I'm not talking about me. You know what I'm saying? I ain't. I definitely, I definitely ain't no prophet or nothing of the sort. Right? But there will be prophets that come. And you have to be familiar enough with our history so that you can align what's real from what's fake. Because otherwise, if you fall for this silly stuff that these people are talking about today, you're going to be quick worshiping a false prophet, getting a mark on you, thinking it's the mark of the most high God. Right? I'm about to get some, some clothing uh, printed up with, uh, 
with that mark right there. You see where that T is in Tadiyah? That's a mark. That's a Hebrew letter, right? That's a Hebrew letter called a Ta. I put it up every time I put it up. Every time I put it up, every time, I, every now and again, I get like, brother, you got a cross. You know what I'm saying? I heard you, I heard you, I heard you teaching against cross and saying it was idolatry, but you got a cross in y'all logo. If you know, then you can separate a cross from a word, a cross from a letter. You yeah, ain't never seen like, nobody called the letter T a cross. Yeah. Right? Like, if I just put a regular letter T right there, nobody would call it a cross. Letter T. They, they have a letter T. But because you put the Hebrew letter up there, and they're not, they don't, not, I'm not saying this to, you know what I'm saying? Because who would know? No, you know what I'm saying? Ain't nobody taught us Hebrew. It's our language, but ain't nobody taught it to us. So who would know? I'm not saying it for that reason. I'm just saying that if you don't know, of course that looks like a cross. You would think that's idolatry if you don't know. But did you know that the, the very word in Ezekiel chapter 9, when the, when the Most High God says, go mark all the people that serve the Most High God, mark all, I think what he said is, mark all the people that weep for all the foolishness that's going all around them, right? But when the Most High God marked the people that, that, uh, that served him, it's that very letter. It's translated as the word mark. So in other words, he put... If we read it literally in the scripture, he's putting that on those people. If you don't know that, you can confuse the mark of the beast with the mark of the, because there are two marks now. You have to understand. They're going to be the mark of the Messiah and they're going to be the mark of the beast. You might confuse them. People think it's going to be a tattoo or a chip yeah, that they're going to put in your the, skin. Huh? It goes back to the, the wheat and the tares, you know. Satan tries to copy his, he tries to get exactly. as close as, as close to God as he possibly can to make it. Exactly. That's, that's the trouble. That's why you got to be precise. It can't be no guessing games. It can't be no like, nah, I feel like maybe, eh, I don't feel like, look, I get scared anytime somebody say, I don't feel like God would, as soon as they get scared, I'd be like, oh, man. they could be right. Sometimes people be right. But I'd be like, man, you can't say it like that. Because if you get to relying on what you feel like, today you right, tomorrow you won't be. You can't rely on how you feel. Some of this stuff, look, some of the stuff in this book should feel offensive to you. Some of the stuff that God says should feel like up because you a sinner. We are sinners. If we come from sin and we agree everything in the book, oh yeah, all that makes sense. Some would be wrong. There should be some friction. If my mind been programmed to sin all my life and then I read the book and it ain't no friction, nothing in the book challenges me, then something should be off. Right? It should. You should look at it and be like, mm, I don't know why God even care that much about X, Y, and Z. Like, why he care about what I should sow in my field? Why he care about what types of seed I put in my field? Why he care about the fabric that I wear? Why is that such a big deal to him? It makes sense to us one day. Any questions? That's the end of uh, Daniel. Yeah. All right. Well, yeah, we gonna we gonna we gonna pick back up in Jeremiah. Uh, I just wanted to make sure we saw that Daniel is one of the ones that got carried off, and Daniel tells us who actually got carried off in that first. This is the first group of, of people from Judah being carried off. Uh, as, that's part of this Ezekiel, exile, at least. Ezekiel huh? in that group too. When Ezekiel in that group with Daniel? Uh, I don't think, might have been, so. I, thought I think I think Ezekiel better. got the next run. I think he was uh, I think he's Zedekiah, but I gotta oh, double okay. check. I'm not sure. I gotta. I I, he he, he might have been in there. Yeah, I gotta double check. I I I I'll look at it this week and just make sure. Yeah. But yeah, my my first mind say Ezekiel came a little bit later. Yeah. There's a couple. It's a couple. It's a couple of these that happen before uh before everybody is taken and before the temple is destroyed. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? But this is the first batch of people that came. Yeah, because you know he saying? uh he know. came back before Zedekiah. Nebuchadnezzar, huh? when he set up Zedekiah, he left with people too. When he what? When he set up Zedekiah, he did leave with people too. What do you mean? Like he, when he came and uh and he removed, I think it was Jehoiakim and set up Zedekiah. When he went back to Babylon, I think he took people with him. Oh, yeah, yeah, for sure. 
Yeah, for sure. You know what I'm saying? And it's uh yeah, it's it's a it's a it's, it's a couple goals at it. You know what I'm saying? It's a couple different waves of people that go to Babylon. So we're gonna look at this a few people that stayed. You know what I'm saying? And then and then once we when we get to the people that stayed and the prophecy about people that uh stayed, then uh then we gonna then we're gonna talk a little bit about the Maccabees and a lot of the books that that people say is, you know, left out of the Bible and all that. I'm telling you, I be telling you all the time, sometimes these Christians ain't all the way wrong. You know what I'm saying? Like, like y'all try to make it look like the Christian wrong about everything they do. Sometimes they not all the way wrong. But we're gonna talk about all that stuff. We're gonna talk about the Maccabees, we're gonna talk about Tobit, we're gonna talk about uh, you know what I'm saying, a lot of the stuff that came from the period, um, from the time that we was out. Uh and uh and try to make some sense of it. But uh any 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 questions? Question fellowship today. Yeah, we definitely got fellowship fellowship today. Uh so fellowship hour is gonna start at four four PM Pacific time. Um reach out to me if you if you don't have a link, reach out to me and uh and I'll shoot you the link and we can uh we can get down, get together, bring some questions, or we can just talk. Uh no other questions then? All right, well, let's pray out. All right. Have a peace, y'all.